We're going to briefly go over square roots of fractions and decimals. So we spent some time going over square roots, so you know you're looking for perfect squares. So in our first example here, 36 over 81 is inside the radical sign. So we have to look, is 36 a perfect square? Yes, it's 6. Is 81 a perfect square? Yes, it's 9. So then we can say, can we simplify this down further? Well, these are both divisible by 3. So this gives us 2 thirds. So the square root of 36 over 81 is 2 thirds. So the same thing here. Square root of 49 is 7. The square root of 100 is 10. So your answer is 7 tenths. Here, 144. Is it a perfect square? Yes. 12 times 12. And then the square root of 36 is 6. And can we simplify? 12 divided by 6 is 2. Now the same thing can happen with decimals. So you have to look here and see if this decimal here it has to be in our answer. So we've got to think about what that means. But if we look at just 144, that's really 12. But then we have to think about what is that um, in conjunction with 144. Well, remember we're multiplying whatever our number is, 12 times 12 to get us 144. But we want it to be two decimal places over. Well, two decimal places, when we multiply, when you learned in fifth grade, 12 times 12, if you had decimal and you needed two places, you have to have two places over. So that's why it's 1.2. So the same thing here. The square root of just 64, we know is 8. 8 times 8 will give us 64. But we need it to be two places over which means we need two places in here that we would add. So each of them need one. So our answer is 0 0.8. With 36 or 0.36, think about it as just 36. 36 square root is 6. 6 times 6 equals 36. But we need two spots for the decimals to be. So each one of these needs 1. So our answer is 0.6. Now, this is something we haven't talked about, but if you can have a negative number outside of your radical symbol. You still work this problem the same as you do. Is it a perfect square? Yes. 2 times 2. And then this negative is applied after. So the answer to that is negative 2. If we have fraction inside, we do it just like we just discussed. Square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 81 is 9, and then the negative is applied. This means a plus or minus. Think about a perfect square of 9 is 3. Well, if we square 3, we get back to 9, which is the same thing as 3 times 3. We get to 9. But having a negative means we have a negative 3 times a negative 3, which still equals 9. So our answer for this one would be plus or minus a 3.